Hello there, welcome to Candid Cruisers. I'm delighted to be joined today by Dave Monk, a cruise blogger extraordinaire who's just won Cruise International Blogger of the Year, um, and Lynn Horton, travel writer, journalist, roaming scribe. Welcome mm. to you two as Thank well, you. Lynn. Um, now, we, we all know there's a cruise for everyone out there, and many cruises leave from home shores, but many cruises you fly to. Do either of you or do both of you have a preference for which you like best, Lynn? Ooh, um, because I love going to exotic destinations, I have to admit I most of the time I'm on a flight going to, you know, maybe Southeast Asia to do yeah. a, a cruise from, uh, you know, Kuala Lumpur or something yeah. like that. That's more my thing, I would okay. say. Okay, okay. Dave? Well, the great thing about doing a cruise from Southampton or anywhere within Britain. Or but, Tilbury. Or yes, or Tilbury. wherever, Harwich or whatever, Dover, um, is that what my wife loves to do is fill the car full of absolutely everything I'm she, could, oh, she could possibly want. Um, and as long as it will physically fit in the cabin, <laughs> we can take it on board. Um, and so it's, it's great. And I always take lots of cameras and gear as well. So you, you don't, and you don't have to go through an airport. Um, which to me is one of the seventh circles of hell. Yep. Um, so you can drive down to Southampton, for example. Uh, they'll, the porters will take your luggage when you arrive. You'll, you'll next see it when you go on board, you're in your cabin and you're out on a balcony sipping champagne yep. rather than being in a departure suite. However, it would probably be raining. I will just say, yeah. oh, sorry. Always. Oh, your always. mouth. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's true. I, I, I That's know, the balance. That's yeah. the balance. I know what you mean about flying to a destination and you fly, say, I don't know, uh, you know, over to the Caribbean or you, fl mm. you we flew to Peru for one of the most <gasps> exotic cruises. Although the so yeah. I've learned now that if you are going to actually fly somewhere as wonderful as that, then try and fly a bit earlier so you can spend a yes. night or two yes. under your own steam mm. before you board ship but I'm on having done both I'm actually with your wife because not just for actually ease of not having to go through the whole airport rigmarole ease of not worrying about your luggage um, but it's what you want to bring back as well you just don't yes. have to think about it as long as it fits in the cabin one, one, you bring it back sorry one of the things we, we have done before is is to fly to New York but then come back by QM2. So you oh, can do. Very, very good. Uh, very you, good. You can do option. all your shopping there and then take it on Great. board. Yeah. And you come back and you just gain an hour a day as you as you come back so that um you know it's very relaxing no jet lag and and a, and a fabulous way to come back that's can, a really good idea can i just add yeah that i do think that people believe oh my goodness i'm going to be at sea for six mm. nights <laughs> there'll be nothing to do mm. i will be bored out of my mind oh my goodness isn't it? There couldn't be anything further from the truth. No, we were so busy. When... You're so busy. Mm. Yeah. And it's so, I have to admit that actually being at sea, at sea, there's almost, it's, it is a really, you're involved, it's like nature is all around you, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So even if you're like a bit of a nature freak, you know, and if you're on the QM, um, QM2, you can, they've got like things like the planetarium. Yes. And lectures, great lectures. Lectures, I mean, yes, there's fantastic. something for everyone, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, cinema. I, I actually think, on balance, I almost prefer sea days to port mm. days, mm. you know, because there is so much to do. Well, I like them both, but it depends on your itinerary. But you're absolutely, it's a really good point, Lynn. That's one of the myths, will I be bored? Let's, mm. let's look at another sort of couple of, of myths. Um, one is that um, I hear some people saying that Cruising is losing losing its glamour. It's losing that, yeah, because you you don't have to dress up. You, the dress code isn't quite so strict anymore, and various other things. And they just say it's not quite got the sort of glitz and, and spritz that it used to have. Would you say that was true? Do you think that that could be an American influence? Because I grew up out in California, where casual dresses de rigueur and uh -huh. everyone dresses very casually very mm. they might be even be quite smart uh -huh. but the idea some and then and then you get those people that may actually might really be attracted to the idea of formal dress but then say they're flying yes to go on their yeah. cruise yeah, think again. of mm. or, and, and then again you're restricted by the amount of mm. luggage etc and you're you know 
the tux and the, the you know the gown and the shoes and it's a lot of extra weight so I, I mean, it could be a practical issue for people yes there, yeah, there are still good. cruises that do encourage you to dress up and be formal and and the irony is actually on if you go on a carnival ship which is a very you know popular um people go to extraordinary lengths to dress up in the evening um so it, it's, it's not necessarily the grander the ship um but the 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 uh, progress over the last, well, some may regard it as progress over the last few years, has been more towards informality, isn't it? In informal dinner times, more restaurants, no set seating, uh, and no or fewer formal nights. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously that is attracting more people to cruise, but there are the traditionalists who say mm. it was always, it was better when everyone dressed up, you had one uh, main dining room uh, you sat at tables with people you didn't know so it depends how you define glamour really I think I think there is still glamour there if, if you want it yes good I do too <laughs> another myth is that um, I hear some people saying but cruising is such an expensive holiday which uh, no, it's so it's not, not when you think of everything that's included mm. it's so not an expensive yeah. holiday is it but it's, you know, back to the glamour part. I just want to quickly add, because I, I think it was, it was either a book I read or a program I saw that talked about how it was only the beginning of the last century that, you know, people even started using ships to, as customers mm, mm. to go across the Atlantic, say, to get to New York. And it was only, of course, the very wealthy that could go. And they say that the whole thing about the glamour was a whole marketing spiel mm. to get people to actually, you know, go on these ships as customers. Um, isn't that incredible? Isn't that and I fascinating. It is so fascinating. And I never I never knew that because I wasn't around in those days. Mm. But and so, you know, maybe we're going to come around full, full circle, full, wow. full circle, because we don't need that anymore. People are going to come on ships, you know, to not it's just getting from A to B, but mm. as your holiday, enjoying the destination. So we That's don't need that marketing really anymore to that say clever. that it must be glamorous for, you know, the upper class and all that yeah, sort of thing. A clever PR spin. Exactly. Yeah. What would you say, uh, Dave, about the, the value for money that we get on well, cruises? Well, I, I think the thing is with cruises, you tend to see a headline figure and, and that appears to be in the thousands. It seems a lot, uh, though more in the hundreds now. But as you say, when, when you consider that really once you get on board, yes, you may have to pay extra for some restaurants, but you can get through uh, by, by eating in the main restaurant, eating in buffets. Um, you don't have to do the spas and the expensive shore excursions. You can walk into ports and, and just go around the local towns. So it, uh, most things are included. The, the food, obviously the accommodation, the entertainment, uh, and people don't think that when they go to a hotel somewhere uh, and they say, well, that's much cheaper, but they're paying for their own transport. They're not being taken around to yeah. different places. Um, and and any entertainment or food is going to be on top of that. Yeah. Yeah, no, very good point, because you have got that incredible variety on a ship, both in terms of the ports you're visiting, you know, and you only unpack once, old cliche, mm. but it's true, you know, on all of the entertainment on offer. Mm. Yeah, you're right, if you factor it in, and, and what's included, and of course, on many ships now, drinks included, mm. gratuities That's included. Right. That's right, know. right, some of the packages, I think that uh, Royal... Caribbean is doing some kind of an amazing inclusive package at uh -huh. the moment. And I, I remember having, I, I can't remember off the top of my head what it was costing per day, but it was really reasonable. I thought, wow, they're really, they're catching on yeah. mm. that people really, the all inclusive thing is it's, really It's really good, isn't it? Because it used attractive. to be, or it started, it seems to me, with the higher end, yes. you know, mm. the Regents, the, the Crystals mm. and all of that. And then river cruises sort of are, mm. are more mm. inclusive, if you like, for excursions and drinks at, mm. with lunchtime or at meals. But now it seems to be catching mm. on more and more, which is a great trend, I think. And also, I think you're it makes, um, um, I was on Seabourn once, which is all inclusive, and it does make getting to know people that much easier. Because True. apart from the fact that you can go to a bar and have a drink, you can also say, well, meet for a meal. People can have different wines. You know, you don't, you're not thinking, oh, should we get that 
bottle or that bottle. You can have a different glass each. Yeah. You can be drinking champagne if you wish, and no one's going to be thinking, hang on, when it comes to the bill. Exactly. I didn't have a glass, and he's had three. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so it, it's, it's, it's a great way if you, if you just meet people on board and say, oh, do you fancy a drink or a meal tonight? And there's not that kind of pressure of who's going to pick up the bill at the end of the evening. That's a really, really good point. Really good point. Yes. Stay with us. We're going to take a break now, but we've got some more really good points coming up after the break. See you soon. Welcome back to Candid Cruisers. I'm talking to Lynn Horton and Dave Monk and they are being fascinating because you're, you're really honest as well and not that other people aren't, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's really good when we can talk turkey, mm. you know, yes, talk, tell it like it is. What are your thoughts on the latest innovations uh, that we're now seeing on cruise liners? Things like, you know, zip lining and... and uh, skydiving. Skydiving. Yes. Now, which ship is skydiving on? Uh, that's on Anthem Quantum. It is Anthem Quantum. Allure. Uh, um, and is it on... Is it on Harmony? No. No? No. No, Harmony has a bis... Yes. The, the, uh -huh. Is it the Great Abyss or it's just it's, the, it's the Abyss? So it's called, for anybody who doesn't yes. know this, talk us through a bit. What an, talk us through yes. what's how, okay. how skydiving works as well. Yes, well, the skydiving is done, it's one of these things where they have the huge, huge, yes, pump at the <laughs> bottom that, that kind of suspends you in the air. Um, simulator. Yes, That's a it. simulator. Oh, wow. So you yeah. feel like you're flying. Yes, oh, yeah. I, I've not, have you tried it yet? Um, I don't think I got the chance to try it for no. some reason. Lynn, so, that's not like you. It isn't like me, is it? Because uh, <laughs> I love that sort of thing. And I think what happened was occasionally if you only, say, have a day and a half on board, you're mm. on a large, large ship, mm. yeah. you're like, oh, I want to try that restaurant. Oh, they've got yeah, an yeah. ice yes. rink. Oh, yeah. there's this. Yes. And, you know, and everybody, of, of course, wants to try anything. So it's a bit hard but um, I'll forgive you. I, I did do the uh, it's did you do the, the abyss uh, the ultimate abyss I oh think. that's it yeah. it's ultimate it, that's um right. and that's um a 10 story high slide 100 on, feet on on uh, on harmony <gasps> um so yeah 100 and, I think like 100, a helter skelter yeah no, it is so yeah what what we would call a helter skelter um I think it's 150 feet above the waves uh, so when you start off oh. you have this terrific view down oh um, and, uh, and, and <laughs> this is somebody who doesn't like heights. Yeah. My dad had severe vertigo. I don't. Oh, really? I don't have bad vertigo, but I'm mm. not sure how I'd feel at the top. Uh, oh. that, that's that was a real thrill. That was yeah. fantastic. The other thing on Carnival Vista, just thinking of that, mm -hmm. is they have these kind of cycles that are suspended. Daniel, our producer, has done that. Oh, Sky yes, ride. yes, and that that again is 150 feet above the waves, and that that was brilliant as well i mean these things and the north star which is on the oh, anthem and quantum yeah where you have the kind of like a london eye stop top it's like a little capsule on the end of a on a arm which goes up, up and down right and vertically in the and air and then across yeah you over love the that waves with so wonderful. that's yeah a, <laughs> really wonderful oh well, i love heights though you see mm. so oh gosh I, I grew up in the mountains so, so there, I love, and I love dodgems and dodgems you know, yes yeah. bumper cars yeah so there's there's wonderful things and i i think i think they're great i think you know every well a lot of the bigger ships now they, they always have to think up some sort of new gimmick yeah and and sometimes it doesn't work or it you know after a while they quietly get rid of it and bring in something else but, but dave what do you think about i have read recently mm. that most of the people that go on board never try don't these do things that, really? don't oh, do these mm. things really that's what so why do they pick the big, great big ships mm. that are often them? maybe well for, for their children perhaps do they? yes maybe it's parents mm. and yeah they, yeah want some activities for there, the there's, children. There's much more multi-generational, as they call it. Oh, now, which is a good thing. I haven't mm. just become mm. a grandmother. Yes. Oh. And, uh, yes, she's three months now. I yeah. love her to bits. But I, I can foresee, and my daughter loves mm. cruising, I can foresee a time when I'd love us to all go away as a big family. And, mm. and multi-generational cruising is very on trend. Yes, oh, it certainly yeah. is. Uh, and there is something for everyone because uh, the the grandparents have got the theatres and the bars and whatever the trips, uh, and then as you say, the parents and the and the children or teenagers have got so many facilities as well. But some people just like being on a on a big ship, full stop. They uh, do. They like. I think Americans. I hope this doesn't sound negative, <laughs> but. 
I did grow up out there. Um, they, you know, bigger is better. You're, yeah. you're kind of, you know, that ethos is, is really part of the culture. Yeah. So there, you know, as you read about the new ships, I mean, the the two new Carnival and the new piano yes. ship are 180,000 yeah. gross tons. I mean, they, yeah. they're going to be, so yeah. we're we're still seeing these massive, massive ships And we will more built. and more, I think. I, I is there think anything so. that either of you would like to see uh, more on ships, a new innovation? you'd like personally to see? What I like, what I like, and, and, and um, I hate to say it, I am a bit addicted to my devices. So the fact that, you know, um, RCCL came out with, you know, high-speed broadband, yes. basically, yes. at sea. Yeah, fantastic. For me, I think absolutely fantastic. Mm. Did that cost? It does cost. It does yeah. cost. It does. Cost. Uh, it, does. It, it is great that that Viking uh, ocean cruises do free Wi-Fi. Yes. Although, yeah. of course, is it good? Is it good? It's it's so so. It's not okay. bad. It's not it's not okay. as good as obviously the, you know, all dancing Royal Caribbean got its mm -hmm. own satellite type. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's nothing quite like that. But, but I think most yeah. people, when, whenever you go onto these discussion um, forums on on Facebook and people start talking about Wi-Fi, everyone starts well. Traditionalists start saying, "Well, you sh you're getting away from all that. You shouldn't need to be in touch all the time." <laughs> but of course, you know, it's a social media age. And we, live in, age. The, and people, we live in the real world. People want to take pictures of themselves of on, course, on the ship yeah. or on shore. Or you want to FaceTime your family yes. or of Skype course. or whatever. Mm. You know? Absolutely, I, I really think that is the trend that is going to um, be able to make cruising so much more um, accessible for people. Mm. I know exactly what you're talking about. I've heard people saying, but the one thing I want is for my teenagers <laughs> to get their face out of that screen and do something <laughs> active. But, you know, I think, I, I just think it's a remarkable thing. Yeah. To think that a ship would have its like own satellite. And mm. I, I just think that, yeah. that to me, and I'm not, a, I'm not a real technology person, but I do think that that is a fantastic thing. Well, also, I mean, it's not just that, um, that you might want to keep in touch with family. As, as writers, which we all mm. are, we, we, we got to file copy back oh. in at home. I, yes. I've been, I was on one ship once, I won't mention the brand, but, uh, and it was a press launch, and I had to file my story by that night, the night that we got on the ship to make the deadline uh, back in London. And uh, this was in the Caribbean, and I could not get a signal. You know, love and, and in the end, at midnight, I went up on the top deck where the Wi-Fi box was, and, and sat by the Wi-Fi yeah, box. I, I can picture myself doing that. I even lifted the lid <laughs> as if it would somehow help. Um, he restarted the router, and, and, and of course, I'd, I'd written the whole thing. All I needed to do was hit the oh, no. send button, and eventually it went through. Oh. But, I mean, thankfully Been now, there. normally when you get on the ship, the Wi-Fi is better. It, it might be expensive, it might be erratic. But it's so much better than it used yeah. to be. Yeah, it used to True. be. Lynn and I, I think, was it was it the time we were in Myanmar and we couldn't get a signal back, we couldn't get anything, couldn't call home, couldn't email. No, and it's all right. It's quite nice for a couple of days, as long as you don't have to file copy. Mm. But after sort of like three or four days, it, you start to feel so cut off from mm. your loved ones you know mm. that's true and often we would be traveling without um, partners or without yep. the family and then it, it will make you feel more cut off yeah. not with yeah. with those people yeah but, um, quickly yes, favorite well. destination or favorite cruise mm. line or mm. both Lynn, stick your you neck go out first. go you want me to go first yeah it's th this is fascinating because i've just been reading about this itinerary and I love Star Clippers. Oh, I yes. love Star Clippers. Yeah. Ah, really do because I'm. See, the, see, it's. I might sound trendy. No, yeah. oh, no. Put me on those traditional ships. I absolutely love it. The masted ships. I think it's amazing, romantic, and they've got a new itinerary, uh, sailing out of Phuket, and going to all these unique little beaches and islands, including the Similan Islands, which I think are some of the most, it, it, they're just beautiful. The beaches are gorgeous. You go snorkeling. There's um, every color of fish under the wow. sun and it's stunning and beautiful. Fantastic. Yeah, really fantastic. So, so that's they, on your wish list to come. Yeah, and they've got that itinerary in December. I have other things going yeah. on. I don't think I'll be going on that cruise, but I'm, I'm certainly gonna free. tell. <laughs> 
<laughs> there we go. Let's get. And then you can tell me all about yes. it. Oh, so Dave, something that you want to do or have done that uh, you can recommend? I, I think the thing I have done, which uh, I'm sure Lynn has done as well, is Alaska. I think Alaska is mm. fantastic, and it's one of the places in the world that's best seen from a ship, because you can't you can't drive along there. the The roads run out. Uh, there is some rail, but and, and you can fly. But the best way is to go by a ship. Um, but wish list, yes, New Zealand maybe. I'd love oh, to do that. To go yeah, in all the coasts, excellent. maybe go on a smaller ship and go into lots of the coves and yeah, yeah see and, and go Sound go, and go, go round oh, Australia as well. It'd be fantastic. And yeah. that's the other thing is the uh, the kind of the advent of land and cruise or yes. cruise and stay, yes. where yes. you can get a bit of both. Mm. Like you can go inland or go mountain yeah. hiking or whatever mm. and do your cruise yes. as well yeah. isn't that like the best of both worlds yes, i think so that's is. becoming more and more popular as well i suppose it's a bit of a version of getting to a destination earlier mm. and, and staying yes. there but instead of doing it under your own steam the cruise line covers it all so mm. yeah best of both worlds thank you for both of you being the best of both worlds <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining me thank you for watching see you next time for candid cruises bye for now Thank you.